Hello and welcome back to the show where my microphone is never plugged in, but I want to feel like the other actual YouTubers who know how microphones work. I cannot hop on the internet without hearing the name Jonah Hill. Oh, before we get started too, if you enjoyed the video, please hit the subscribe button. We are trying to get to 700,000 subscribers and I can't do it without you. Thank you so much in advance. So I cannot get on the internet without hearing the name Jonah Hill. And for a while, I ignored it because I don't even know who that is. Oh, oh my producer is saying I do know who it is. You should come over. I got a DJ, rented a bouncy house. I don't know how. I don't really feel like being around a bunch of people. No, no, no. That's the best part. It'll just be like you and me. Oh, so if this is the first time you're seeing this video or seeing me, I mostly watch cartoons. Never been in a, 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 a woman's apartment before. I mean, I've been in them. I mean, I'm not scared. Hey, look, flowers. And I usually don't enjoy adult movies and therefore I don't really know what's going on in Hollywood. I don't know many Hollywood names, but I do know the faces. But apparently he's the fat guy in Megamind. What's wrong with me? Renting a bouncy house? Chicks don't like bouncy houses, they like clowns! Now even though I don't know Jonah Hill, I've never seen like a movie with him, I have seen clips of him in very, very popular movies where he was, like his whole theme was the funny fat guy, the teddy bear, the funny one. Ask me about my winner! And recently there is a lot of talk about Jonah Hill and I ignored it up until people started infiltrating my inbox. And I'm just here to say in the beginning of the video, can you guys stop telling me what I need to do and what I need to talk about? You can just ask nicely. If I am interested, I will talk about it. And apparently this time it worked because I found myself diving into a deep hobbit hole of a guy that I don't know much about and about a very thick situation that the whole world or at least internet world is talking about. And since my nickname is The Node, I wanna know what's going on. So I read the text messages, I read the articles, I watched the videos, I even watched his documentary. And this is thick, this is juicy, this has caused an uproar on the internet and it quite possibly, allegedly could be illegal. So today we are looking deep into the man who says he is the absolute best boyfriend, but the internet slammed that statement down, spit on it, yanks down their pants and took a fat on that statement and said, absolutely not, sir. You are in fact not a good boyfriend and said that he is a misogynistic, controlling and insecure little man. And then the other side is saying Sarah, his ex-girlfriend who has exposed everything about him is a conniving bitch who is grappling onto relevancy like Scar in the ending scene of Lion King. And there is nothing wrong with Jonah Hill setting boundaries. So today I'm going to break down the whole story because I have seen many people people you know, it seems that many people are focusing on just the tiny parts. They will react to like a couple of the text messages and it is a long conversation that went on for years. And it seems that a lot of people that I watched will cut out certain parts that they know that their audience will agree with. Because if you question any of the party's text messages, Today you're gonna die, say goodnight. That's what they will do virtually, okay? they. They will hurt you. You have to pick sides. As in, if you question anything Sarah did, you are a misogynistic asshole just like Jonah Hill. And if you question anything that Jonah Hill does, then you are the absolute worst thing you can be now. Woke and a man hater. So because this is just such a heavy topic and I think people like to speak from personal experience, I wanna make sure to take all sides into consideration. Put my size 6.5 feet into each of these people's shoes and of course share my opinion. So now it's time to get nosy. Is Jonah Hill actually setting realistic, very simple boundaries? It's easy and good. Or is he a misogynistic pig trying to control a woman? And since I really don't know who these people are, let's start with just that. Who is Jonah Hill and Sarah Brady? Hey, the Uber pulling up on call. Tell me as you trying to fall through. I'm gonna leave it. Jonah grew up in a wealthy Los Angeles neighborhood in Cheviot Hill. His mother was a costume designer and a fashion stylist. His father, a tour accountant for Guns N' Roses. Working in Hollywood seemed to run in his family as his sister Beanie Feldstein was an actress and older brother Jordan was a music manager for Robin Thicke and Maroon 5. So it was very, very natural for Jonah to just dip his little toes into the world of acting and he didn't just dip his toes in. He jumped into the Hollywood ocean with a full shirt on. That's right. Jonah Hill fulfilled the role as the funny fat guy in almost every single movie, such as Superbad, Knocked Up, Get Him to the Greek. I have to sneeze. 
What? I have to sneeze, but I'm terrified that my bowels will evacuate if I do. 21 Jump Street, This is the End, and 22 Jump Street. And of course, as my lovely producer mentioned earlier, he voice acted in the very underrated uh, movie, Megamind, which I play on repeat all the time. I had no idea he was the voice actor to the self-proclaimed bad guy that ended up turning into a villain once he got superpowers and just a tad bit too much control. Ow! Let me guess, after seeing how awesome I am, you finally come to your senses. Am I foreshadowing? Perhaps. Eventually, being the fat guy and constantly getting made fun of for his weight and appearance on and off screen started getting under Jonah's skin. Jonah, do you think it's important to be unattractive to be funny? Are you are you deliberately trying to do this to like get a rise out? Is this is this English dry wit or? Can skinny people really be funny? Because Jonah is clearly more funny than you in the film, Michael. You know, just, we've done 20 fucking interviews today and I feel like you're personally just coming after me. Now this interview is said to be a skit to some people and some people are saying it was just a joke played on Jonah Hill. Everybody was in on it except Jonah and some say it's real because Hollywood is real. But whether it's real or not, there are plenty of interviews where he looks uncomfortable when the topic of his weight comes up. He's been very vocal about his issues with his body actually. This you know, in goofy comedies and, and um, you know, it's this kind of like curly haired, overweight kid and everyone had their own opinion on what I should be, how they could speak to me, how they could treat me. It took a long time, I, honestly until right now, for me to come out sort of as the person, artist, uh, mind, what I represent, how I feel, how I'd like to be spoken to, how I speak to the world in a way that actually represents who I am as a person as opposed to me trying to be something else that I'm not. Eventually, Jonah slapped his foot down and said, enough is enough, I'm gonna lose weight. So he started working out, incorporating running, boxing, jiu-jitsu, and of course, surfing. Jonah ended up getting a nutritionist and lost 40 pounds, but the comments about him being the fat, funny, ugly friend still seem to come up and get to him. In 2011, he appeared in an ESPN SB award show and showcased his weight loss and explained he lost weight so people would take him more seriously. He also wanted more serious roles. You know, the manly roles, the not the fat, funny friend and every single joke is about him being fat or smelly. First of all, you smell good, which is surprising. <laughs> Why is that surprising? I don't know. I just wouldn't think of a you, a guy who would have a nice scent on. And it That's such a, good. like, I'm going to really work hard to not take that as a shot. <laughs> Unfortunately, the reporters did not take him very seriously and asked him questions he didn't like and focused mostly on his looks and his role as the fat guy. But are you still considered the fat guy when you go to a party or anything? Because I run into that a whole lot. I'm, I'm the fat one. So does that, does, are you the fat guy in Hollywood still? Or... Or is everybody like look at you and they're like, oh wow, you know, this is great, now you're healthy. Uh, do you have any other questions that are smart? Okay, okay, I know what you guys are saying. Just get to the text. We want your opinion on the text so we can fight about it and tell you that you're wrong or right. We gotta rage, and I know, we're gonna get there. We're gonna rage together, I swear, once we get to the text. I feel like getting to the background of Jonah Hill and Sarah is extremely important and really sets up the text messages along with everything else we're gonna talk about. Because the more I watched and learned about Jonah, in my opinion, is shows that he is a very insecure man when it comes to his body and just his image. So much so that he asked his audience to stop making comments about his body after he lost weight. I know you mean well, but I kindly ask that you not comment on my body. Heart, good or bad, I want to politely let you know it's not helpful and doesn't feel good. Much respect. And this was the start of many people from the body positive group noticing Jonah, which meant Jonah's female audience started to increase. Eventually, Jonah Hill would identify as a feminist. Once known as the king of bro films, that started to change in 2018. Jonah would look back at the movies he used to make and said, yeah, they were funny, yeah, they made a lot of people laugh, but they were actually pretty toxic and started to fight against toxic masculinity. According to an interview with Vice, that he seemed well aware of the role his early movies played in creating space for misogynistic humor, and announced he wants his future projects to continue to challenge traditional masculinity. In Hill's 2018 film titled Mid-90s, where the humor is very fitting for well, the mid-90s, the film got a lot of flack for the offensive, outdated jokes which he addressed. I thought it would be way more disrespectful to change history than to show it, just as it was, and let the audience see how ugly it feels. 
The movie was supposed to show an era of rampant misogyny, homophobia, and too cool for feelings punk culture that brought up a generation of men like him. Men, according to Jonah, that is full of toxic masculinity. In fact, he told a story about a ping pong match with a woman at the office. A man peeked his head into the room midway and asked, what's the score? 14 to 20, Hill replied. She's winning. The guy scoffed. You're losing to a girl? And Jonah replies, that's not a very feminist attitude, my friend. Well, through the years, Jonah Hill had a slew of romantic partners. Rita Ora, that one was random and surprised me. Apparently, Miss Rita, I don't know if I'm pointing in the right direction, but Miss Rita cheated on Rob Kardashian with Jonah Hill and Jonah knew about it. You scandalous but none of those relationships seemed to work out and eventually Jonah would meet a blonde bombshell, a Barbie on the beach surfing in the California sun and her name was Sarah Brady. Trying to spend this time with you, know we all for do what you're doing right now. Sarah Brady, a 24-year-old at the time, photographer, law student, and archaeopologist. She graduated earlier this year from the University of California, San Diego with a Bachelor's of Arts degree in Anthropology of Climate Change and Human Studies with an emphasis of Evolutionary Cognitive Studies and Sustainability. Social media influencer, entrepreneur, model, and of course, professional surfer. Sarah, a usual very private secretive person, but after meeting during a surfing session in the summer of 2021, Jonah decided to slide into her DMs, whispering sweet nothings into the young surfer's ears virtually. Jonah sends Sarah her own picture in the DMs, wearing a tiny bikini, and then follows up with hard eye emojis. Sarah says, how you doing? Jonah says, good, I wanna see you. And after a few flirty texts, they made it official and both had no problem publicizing their love for one another on Instagram. But according to Sarah, behind those matching suits was a very toxic relationship. And in July, 2023, she decided to expose that, which would then divide the internet once again. The texts that Sarah decided to post have caused a divide. A war, actually. A gender war. No man should tell a woman how to dress. I don't think it's controlling. I think it's just letting his emotions out. Break up with him if possible. Well, I think he, he should jump off a cliff. And like I said in the beginning, I saw a lot of people talking about this and they will take a little clip of something, like one or two text messages and then react to it. They don't really go deep. They don't like to get up in there. They only take, you know, a few thrusts a few times, throw in some buzzwords and get out of there so they can get that sweet, sweet YouTube orgasm from all the views from a very, very hot and sensitive topic that many people feel extremely just passionate about. Because a lot of men feel that a lot of women lie when it comes to abuse and a lot of women feel that a lot of men do not take abuse seriously and only categorize abuse if it's physical. Now, Honestly, backtracking back to the, they only take like a few clips and then people freak out. I'll give you an example of a little quickie. In one of Jonah's alleged texts to her, he asked that surfer to delete all Instagram pictures with her ass in a thong. Sarah concluded, someone being an emotionally abusive partner doesn't mean they are a terrible person, often stems from their own trauma. At the same time, it doesn't mean it's okay. Well, you left out a lot. And so a lot of people, mostly men and very, you know, like pinned up, women that are very reserved will say, yeah, these are extremely normal things to ask of a partner if you want a sensible relationship. Women should be more discreet and modest. These are completely appropriate boundaries for a sensible man like Jonah to ask. And then the other side, mostly women, and especially the feminists will say, well, how fucking dare this ex chubby ass motherfucker. Sorry, I have no clue why I'm talking like that, but how dare this guy tell a woman what she needs to wear, how she should wear it, and what she should post on her own Instagram. With all that being said, I do notice a lot of words being just thrown around, like gaslight, misogynistic abuse, just as I'm seeing on the opposite end, people saying that Jonah was acting completely rational. And these are just boundaries and a simple, you know, request that he asks a woman that he loves if she wants to stay in this amazing relationship with an amazing man and they know who Jonah is because he's amazing and he's a nice guy because they know him. Even though months before, many men were calling him a fat liberal and making fun of him for identifying as a feminist. And overnight, like magic, the same people became Jonah Hill stands and saying, he's the man. Three cheers for Jonah Hill. He's an alpha masculine male and he just stated his boundaries. That's all. He's not controlling her or telling her what to do. She can make her own choices. Just gonna take some notes here. Uh, how to be an alpha. Bend over in 
the doggy style position and have your girlfriend slap that ass. Okay. I think I got everything. Oh, and dress like a hot dog. Oh, and I identify as a feminist. You know, I had no clue these were alpha male behaviors though. So. Ladies, spread the word. So with that being said, I'm not gonna use those words. A lot of people seem to shut down when people use those words. I am one because people throw them around like it's nothing these days. And even a lot of online therapists are talking about how a lot of these words are just not being used correctly. Look at it and go, okay, it is what, here's what I think. I am, I feel like we have to be careful of looking at everything and being like, you're an abuser. Uh, I would be very cautious of using the word abuse, even though I don't agree with Joan. I think it is an extreme um, attempt to kind of vilify his actually what, what I see as a cry for help. When we have intense insecurities, it then manifests itself as controlling behavior. But that controlling behavior is a direct correlation to how attached they are to you and how inadequate they feel about the relationship. What I will be using is controlling and hmm, well that's being an asshole and I would absolutely never deal with that. All right, let's get to all those text messages where you guys said that it's going to piss me off extremely deeply. I'm very interested to see how this goes. The premise of the text and what seems like an ongoing issue between the two was that he had a problem with surf culture. He says that he respects and is proud of her surfing, but he doesn't like her being around surfers of the opposite sex, wearing bikinis, and even made a list of what some say were demands and some say are boundaries. Let's take it back to October 12th, 2021. Sarah posts on her Instagram and says, sharing this publicly now because keeping it to myself was causing me more damage to my mental health than sharing it could ever do. I'm sorry I said that. I had a couple beers and I'm just upset feeling like we can't do surf social things without an uncomfortable situation arising that usually feels like my fault somehow. I feel you pull away and then the feeling of being defective creeps in. I think I'm not socially intelligent enough to meet your needs as a partner and then I get frustrated and angry at myself and just want you to rip the band-aid off if I'm not good enough for you. In moments of conflict, my brain thinks you want to dump me because I'm not good enough for you and you are the GOAT and you can do better and you will immediately once you end things off with me. So just reading that in itself, it looks like there's a lot of insecurity on her part as well. There is something that we need to take note is that Jonah was pushing 40 at this time and she was around 24. 25. A lot of you guys already know my opinion on older men going for younger women. I personally think uh, it's usually too easier to control a younger woman seeing an older man have all these things and they think it's amazing. There was a clip of an alpha male podcast saying like, oh, I love 18 year olds because you have a car and they think you're the coolest thing when older women are like, you should have a car. Uh, what's your age? <laughs> now, 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 we are, now we're, now we're talking. How old are you? Don't worry about it, you know? No, that's not fair. Uh, okay, well, <laughs> I just turned 29, but I love teenagers. Uh, I love teenagers so much. The 18 year old ones, they're like, hey, let's watch Death Note. You have a car. You know, it's so much hotter when it's like fresh. 25 year old woman way prettier than a 19 year old she does her makeup better she's more developed she's just hotter but she comes with an opinion but if you date a 19 year old girl she just has fun so you know sometimes it works but personally just right off the bat seeing an older man go for a very young woman usually puts some red flags into my head and the alpha males that talk about this just finalizes that for me when it comes to many older men you have a car going for a very young not really lived in the world as much as you woman you're right we can't do surf social things or develop trust until you consider me and make decisions that give regard to our relationship i have been vulnerable as possible and i am telling you i am needing you to step up to the plate which you can I I am sure of it. You can do it, Sarah. You can do what I want you to do. But those losers don't get your time if you want me, straight up. But so when I first saw this, I was like, okay, so did they have like a, a thing? Was she flirting with other people? We don't have any type of other, nothing ever came out that she was like cheating on him. Except recently, Sarah posted new screenshots exposing herself to an affair she had with Frankie Muniz except she never released them. An Instagram comedian decided to fabricate the whole thing, do some quick editing on Photoshop, text himself a fake conversation, and ran with it. Jonah Hill's ex-girlfriend is airing out more of their dirty laundry. She posted some more screenshots on Instagram. Is it date night or text Frankie Muniz night? Um, excuse me, I'm sitting across from you, maybe talk to me. You seem pretty interested in texting right now. I'm not doing this again. 
What, texting Frankie until 2 a.m.? Good, stop it and let's enjoy dinner. Are you seriously telling me what to do? It's not appropriate for you to be meeting him at the beach at night and to be texting him all the time. I'm tired of this controlling behavior, and I'm tired of you liking all of Frankie's Instagram pics and the constant Snapchatting him bikini pics. I'm sorry, is it illegal for me to have friends? I don't sleep over at other women's houses or go camping with them alone. Also, you've never sent me a bikini pic. Oh my god, this is insane. So what, we have a slumber party like once a week? I'm not your pet. Most of the news networks said, uh, no, these are not legit. It's satire and for views. But many people ran with it fast like a roadrunner. Meep, meep. Imagine trying to play victim with these texts. She shared too much. Now we know she's the problem. She sounds like a covert narcissist. Sure, he's insecure, but it sounds like she's giving him every reason to be. It's controlling to ask your girl not to spend the night with other dudes? Yeah, these weren't real. Many news outlets covered this and said, yeah, no, this is a satire. And then everyone else said, no, you're trying to protect women. But if you just easily just use your eyesight, shift it to the direction, uh, to the right, you'll see the hashtags. One of them is satire. This is the same guy that got on Instagram with his microphone and said 14 men were arrested because Ken was too attractive in the new Barbie movie and they had to pleasure themselves right then and there in the movie theater. Last night, 14 men were arrested for public indecency after they got caught mashing their churros in a San Diego movie theater. And people took it as fact. Anyway, it's fine. It's Instagram. Next line. For context, this is him being upset of her being at an event and a male surfer comes up to her and she is polite. That is not okay. I respect your love of surfing, but I respect myself as well. And your love of and your love of surfing and being in those situations and lack of awareness are not mutually exclusive. This isn't me. I have my own issues that I own. If you want marriage and a family, you can't use the 25 card. Wait, yes she can. She's literally 25 and he's pushing 40, which is why communication is key. Or maybe someone who is more in that age range who's ready to settle down and get married. Jonah, you went after a fun young woman that loves to surf and be in a bikini. I mean, you had no problem here when she was slapping that booty and then decided you wanted her to change all of the things that brought you to like her when you were ready for her to stop being fun. There's absolutely nothing wrong with people changing their goals or changing what they want in a relationship and or you know, getting together with someone and being like, you know what, I don't really like this or I, it makes me feel a certain way and it's just not the way I see my life going. But as I went through the text, it did seem that he was very much using it as an ultimatum. And many will say, yes, he said we can end it right now. But for me, through the text, it felt like those situations where someone threatens to leave someone and it's an empty threat. They're trying to see how much they can get you to change when they really don't want to lose you. They just want to change something about you and use this as an empty threat. You can say she didn't leave, but he didn't leave either. You know, there's a way to word it as in, I don't feel this way anymore. This is where my life is going instead of step up and cut shit. These people don't get your time or kindness at the sacrifice of mine. So according to Sarah, he meant anyone that he didn't personally approve of. Um, and if that's true, sounds just a tad bit controlling to me. What do, you, what do you think? Respect however you wanna live your life. You only get one. Sort of done with explaining myself. So then she goes on and actually removes the post that he was talking about, except for one video that she was extremely proud of. Three removed, not the video yet. It is my best surfing video. Would you feel better if the cover frame was different? Any more specific ones that bother you? Yes. One that isn't your ass in a thong. Not a thong, but K. Okay. And as far as other pictures, you in a bathing suit to surfing or not. Okay, you know what? Let's just pull up the, the the one picture or like at least one picture that he has a problem with. Jonah, this, this seems dramatic. She's a surfer. What do you expect her to post? Listen, I know he doesn't have social media. He got rid of it because he has like debilitating or crippling anxiety. But other people who do not have parents that were already in Hollywood and kind of like he, he had a very big help to get to where he was, where he is today. Other people have to market themselves on free platforms like, like Instagram. She needs social media. Her job is surfing. So then she posts surfing video. She's not in any movie. And also as a woman, this is the absolute least flattering, most awkward stance of a picture. I thought the picture was going to be, you know, some fangs like I spice type cheeks popping out on my face. So close to the screen, I can smell them. This tells me if she posted this awkward 
awkward picture. You know how us women are. We want the perfect, you know, thing. This shows to me that if she posted this and she doesn't want to let it go, this awkward, weird position of a thumbnail, she's extremely proud of the outcome. Like she said, it's her best surfing video. Once again, Surfing's her job, so showcasing doing it well is nice to do. And what it shows to me, this is the way that I'm getting it, that Jonah is looking at this picture as a as sex. He's sexualizing this picture. This isn't her fault that you're that he's sexualizing it and he sees this and he's like, well, now other men are gonna sexualize this picture, which they probably do because men see butt cheeks and think, I mean, I put my dick in it. A hundred dollars, and that's just for opening the door. We need a body. You gonna fuck it? Yes. We're gonna fuck it. So I'm gonna have to give, you know, a check mark under insecure for sure. And I'm also gonna give a check mark controlling, I think. I just, I have a certain mm, to people who control what their significant other posts on their social media. Especially if they are posting these things before they got together and they aren't intense as in making out with people having uh, crazy orgies, spreading their butt cheeks, unless there's some type of adult performer. And in that case, well, you know what she'd be doing. Not to say that, okay, well, you can't have this opinion and it can't make you insecure, but it's a surfing video and you decided to date a surfer and social media is very important in this day and age and now you're asking her to take all of her bikini pictures or swimsuit pictures off of her Instagram that she uses to market herself to, to get jobs. Therefore, it reduces their chances of bringing in an income so that other men aren't looking at your woman. I'm done. There's tons. I'm just going back this past month. Yeah, she's a surfer. That's what she does. Of course, there's gonna be tons of bikini pics. The same bikini pics that you were sending those hard eyes to, sweetie poo poo. You wanna argue, and I don't. Of course he doesn't wanna argue. He just wants her to take everything off and then everything will be fine. Also, it seemed more like a discussion, but many controlling or insecure people will see a discussion as an argument if you aren't agreeing or doing what they want you to do. So that was interesting. You're done? What does that mean? I'm just over explaining myself. So she ended up removing every single post that he didn't like and it still wasn't very good enough. All the posts I removed from my page. Good start. You don't seem to get it. But it's not my place to teach you. I've made my boundaries clear. You refuse to let go of some of them and you've made that clear and I hope it makes you happy. Okay, a little passive aggressive over some pictures. The same pictures that he liked when he was trying to get all up in that surf for so I see a lot of people saying these are very simple requests. These are very like normal types of things to want. And the two battling sides are kind of battling about, well, these are boundaries or are they demand? But let's just like swish that out of the way. I think some people on the side that are, are on Jonah's side are confused. A lot of people on the other side don't, don't care about the demands or the requests or the boundaries. These are fine if that's what you want in a partner. But what people are saying is that this man seeked out a woman, a model, a bikini model, someone that surfs, someone that's in this in industry, someone that has an Instagram. And now he's trying to control all the things that attracted him to her. It's very, it's giving the guy that wants the fun, crazy, sexual, you know, girlfriend, makes her the wife and then says, you should stop doing all of those things. She stops and becomes, you know, this more conservative type woman, more, you know, wearing more reserved type clothing as he requests. And then guess what? He cheated on her with a 25 year old fun woman. That's an OnlyFans model. I've been in this type of situation before because I'm a very outspoken person. I mean, I wear certain clothes like this. I walk around the gym in a sports bra and leggings. I am a muscular woman and this guy kind of seeked me out. He would come up to me all the time in the gym and he loved my muscles and everything. We went on one date and then slowly the comments started coming in once he thought that he claimed me, you know, he was my guy at the gym. And slowly those little comments coming in stating, yeah, maybe you should lose some muscle. Do you think you're all that fem Like little tiny comments, trying to kind of nitpick at the very things that attracted him to me. And right when those things start, you gotta throw the whole man away. But it's not my place to teach you. I'm trying to imagine him just like texting me, excuse you, sir, sir, you are pushing 40, I am 24. 
and you clearly have a problem with what I'm doing, so you do need to teach me. So why don't we both sit down and you teach me and tell me exactly what you want me to wear while I surf. Yeah, this would not work at all. I've been, once again, like another guy will approach me, he'll talk to me, this, this, and that, and he'll be attracted to me, and then once we start talking, all of a sudden, are you sure you should wear that to the gym? Immediately. Throw the whole man out. Nope, 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 right when it starts, get out. Just say it makes you feel a little insecure. That would be so much more manly than trying to make the woman that you were attracted to originally wearing the same types of clothes and making the same types of pose feel like she's doing something wrong. Why not put that up front when you're interested in someone from the beginning? Hey, I absolutely love how you're dressed. You're extremely attractive and have an amazing body and should be shown off. But once I claim you and make you my woman, I expect you to never wear bikinis on the beach. Never talk to any other man, unless I approve. Hmm, why not do that? Wait, you don't gotta tell me to get them emotionally involved and connected, I already know. Literally just say hello and leave the conversation. I love how your therapist thinks I suck. Literally, I am the best boyfriend on earth. It's giving Hal Stewart. It's giving I'm, I am a nice guy and you don't see it, so you're a bitch. I was supposed to be the first one in the group to get a girlfriend. I've always been the nice guy in the group. Hold the door, please. I felt icky reading that. Like, I, I, I feel like I am a good girlfriend to my boyfriend, but I swear to God, if I ever said, uh, I am literally the best girlfriend on earth. Let's go try it real quick and see if it's awkward. Later that day. I also need you to go mow the lawn again. Why? Because I just need you to. It looks stupid. What do you mean it looks stupid? I'm the best girlfriend ever! <laughs> <laughs> Alright, well, that's what we're going with. Gotcha! <laughs> So a few months pass and now we are in the holidays, December specifically, you know, the time where it's joyous and you know, everyone's cheery. Santa Claus is coming to town and people are giving gifts. Well, Jonah Hill is giving lists. Lists of boundaries that need to be met. Plain and simple, if you need surfing with men, hold on, pause, Jonah, I looked up the percentage of men versus women in the surfing, you know, community. More than half of the surfers are men. And seeing how when you surf, you go in the ocean with people, I'm pretty sure there's going to be men around, therefore you will be surfing with men. What exactly does this mean? If there's a surfer 100 feet away from her, you know, should she pull out her megaphone and say, I have a boyfriend! Boundaryless, inappropriate friendships with men. And I agree that you need to have boundaries with people, especially if you are in a relationship and a monogamous relationship, so you that respect the other person. But seeing how he thinks, that uh, this is a thong. I'm very curious to know what is an inappropriate relationship with a man. Talking to one on the beach? Nice super cool kick flip in the water, Barbie. I have a boyfriend! Some clarification would be nice. To model. Sir, are you telling her to quit her job? Yo, I saw a lot of comments saying these were completely reasonable requests and boundaries that he wants. Are they? To post sexual pictures. He once again did not go into depth about what a sexual picture is in his opinion, but I'm guessing it's this. This awkward ass stance is sexual to him. Friendships with women who are in unstable places and from your wild recent past beyond getting lunch or coffee or something respectful. I have absolutely no clue what her friends are like, who's from her, her past or her recent. I just thought it was a very odd way to put it. He put from your past recent past. Can she still hang out with wild crazy women that she meets currently or in the future? And we're not talking about coffee. Get your boots, hang your coat, fuck this I am not the right partner for you. If these things bring you to a place of happiness, I support it, and there will be no hard feelings. These are my boundaries for a romantic partnership. Well, then why did you approach a woman without those boundaries? He, she's doing the exact same things that she did b b before they met. My boundaries with you based on the ways these actions have hurt our trust. His boundaries are all the things he knew about her before 
they got together. Those same things that enticed him, excited him, got his dick quite very hard. If you don't want a woman that wears a bathing suit or, you know, wears scantily clad clothes on Instagram or bikinis, or in your words, a thong bikini, what? First of all, your mom was a fashion designer and you can't tell a thong from a normal, you know, bathing suit. I thought you would know the difference. Doesn't matter. But why date a woman that is the epitome of what you don't like? Unless the women on the internet are right and you're trying to control and mold her. Just look at this text. Oh, and modeling, which is the last profession I would be with as a partner. Come on. Now all of a sudden, that's the last profession that you would choose as a partner. That's not a little odd to some people. We're adding another check mark there that that's manipulative and i know she's around 25 some people think that's old at least in the manosphere but even at 25 you're still just you're still trying to understand certain things and getting mentally you know like that that's just mental manipulation going on and some 25 year old who haven't lived as long as an almost 40 year old it can be very confusing in quotes thought pics but lol must be hard feeling so trapped i have no clue what that means but we'll read on well maybe you should have asked me more about what i do for work before you decided to date me then a little late now keep taking me for granted go model it's a fulfilling life you'll love it real I, I was reading some of these like people that specifically talked about this section in the text and they were like, see, he's wishing her well. He's not manipulating her. He's being nice. Uh, I mean, I mean, I guess we, we all see things differently. I take this as someone being like, go ahead, go model. It brings you so much fulfillment, but I won't be in your life. The best boyfriend ever will never be with you as a model. Real depth and substance and sustainability for relationships, but actually, I'm done with this convo. Yeah, no, yeah, we're adding, we're adding another check to manipulative. I don't know how you can read that and think, yep, totally normal, unless you're someone that likes to manipulate people. It's just constant and doesn't reflect where we are or where you say you wanna be. I respect your skill and your surfing. So much so that you want her to wear sweatpants and a t-shirt while doing it. I respect how you want to present yourself. So much so that when she presents herself in a bikini, you tell her, no, no, none of that. I respect that you're hot and beautiful. Okay. And I respect how you want to live. No, you don't. But I also respect myself and what I'm interested in in my own life and what I let into my heart and inner circle. So celebrate yourself and your life however you please and shine bright. But I don't want to have to deal. Once again, this was in response to her bathing suit picture that attracted him in the first place. Nor may I ever want that from my partner. I reserve that right about it. Let me know. We'll respect you either way, but these are my boundaries of this romantic relationship. Thanks. I'd love to know before the premiere though, so I'm not put in the position of publicly flaunting our love if my boundaries are going to be continued to be disrespected. That would be hurtful and triggering for me. So then Sarah says she agreed to all of the boundaries to protect him from his crippling anxiety he would always complain about. I thought the conversation was done, but it's not. It keeps going. He comes back. So think about if posting bathing suit pictures on your social media identity, whatever that means, means that much to your life. And if it does, all good. But that's not what I'm interested in in a partner. I don't have to keep asking why he pursued her then, but also why did you pursue her? We wouldn't even be having this conversation if you had any sense of how often or excessive it was and is. Uh, it's her job. It's like her asking, uh, yep, scene. It's scene, Barbies, go. Help, help, please, help. <laughs> You'll never get away and soon you will be my bride. Please, someone help me. And we will share a kiss. Oh my God, please someone come and get me. Uh-oh. Thank you so much. You are so handsome, strong, muscular, and I absolutely love your outfit. You really don't leave much to the imagination. Why don't you show me what those powers can do? If you know what I mean. Six months later. And if you want to be with me, you need to stop hanging out with all those women at work. Of course I mean the women you save. It's triggering to me. They can find someone else to save them. You and your x-ray vision. I don't think so. And another thing, that suit shows everything. That needs to stop. Wear this. This is perfectly suitable to do your job. No, it's not better and more respectable. Have a good day at work. A few moments later. So therefore, it 
presents a way larger issue of why you need to do that and not in wetsuits to display your brilliant surfing skills. One I'm willing to discuss in therapy, but the truth underneath it presents a way larger issue, which is what you need and get out of doing that and what that means for our relationship. So yeah, I'm clear headed. Well, we are all glad that you got to clear your head and release all that tension. And Sarah decided to release some tension by screenshotting all of these, posting them to social media right after Jonah Hill's baby mama gave birth for the world to see. I didn't want Miller to have to see all of this while she was pregnant because I didn't know what kind of stress that would cause to her and the baby physically. The timing can seem bad, but I hope she can make an informed decision of how she wants to care for herself and her baby. So this brings up a good discussion whether someone should speak out or not. Many people are saying it's been two years. He shouldn't have said anything. He should have been kept private. Their private conversations. And I don't really have an opinion on that. It seems to be up to whoever wants to out the person, whether they want to out them or not. And I don't know what her intentions were, but my intentions, if this was the, if I decided to release some type of thing from Jonah Hill, it would be for really just my own benefit because I want to publicly humiliate and shame and show everybody the person that you are. Especially if he's out here talking about, I'm a fucking feminist, bitch. I swear to God. But according to Sarah, she did it to help the women of the world and show what emotional abuse looks like. Now, many people have said she's using all these buzzwords speak to really rile up the woman and just been in and, and hurt this man's career. Uh, I do think that she is using certain buzzwords. When it comes to the word narcissistic, people on the internet and in our society are now basically, I think, using the term as a stand-in for abusive. I don't know why the word abusive became out of fashion and then narcissistic just replaced it. It's not the technical term in our field. More text messages were leaked out and the same people that were on Jonah's side are coming out and saying, see, this whole thing was planned. She planned it like the temptress she is. After the breakup, Jonah and Sarah still stayed friends, close friends actually. They would hang out, talk on the phone, but eventually Jonah met a respectable non-model that doesn't wear bikinis and even has a private Instagram account. Hold up, Jonah, what is this? Cause this definitely looks like a bikini to me. Don't say you got some splint, don't do. And I personally think that this is a good choice for him. It seems like he's learned that if he doesn't want to date a bikini model surfer, don't date a bikini model surfer that has an Instagram. I don't want you to bail on school, that's important. I know I don't need to, but in the spirit of pure respect to our friendship and appreciation for each other, I did want to be transparent that I did start dating someone recently. Sorry if that's painful, it just happened. I didn't want to not be transparent with you ever, as I care about you. Thanks for letting me know. Probably best if we don't talk for a while and you figure out where that's headed. I appreciate and understand that. Well, the feeling started settling in for Sarah. Maybe she was jealous, maybe she had an epiphany of what the absolute this guy has been kind of flirty still texting me his ex and now he's in a serious relationship and so she sent him this text not that it's really my business but out of my own personal chicks before dicks code if that's headed anywhere other than hookup or fling i'd appreciate it if you make that woman aware how you recently been flirting with me sexting with me leaning on me for partner level emotional support i'm sorry what <laughs> I don't know why that cracked me up because it sounds like he was just thrown for a loop. He goes on and says, I have been there for you as a friend. Before I move on, you know what I find a little interesting is he didn't want her to talk to guys or be friends with guys when they were in a relationship. It's totally okay for him to be friends with an ex-girlfriend. Can we just admit that that seems just a tad bit hypocritical. That in itself also deserves an excuse me, what? Does his future wife know that he is still chatting it up with his 27 year old ex? Which I have made clear. And not only is it not your business as I only mentioned it to you out of respect and friendship, but I have not been flirting with you or sexting you in any way, not at all. Where it would be inappropriate at this time to start dating someone. And if anything, I have felt for your change and tried to be 
be good and support a friend as you transition to scary new environments. Guys, I thought I was a horrible texter and grammatical person. And to be crystal clear, I have not flirted or sexed with you in any way, shape, or form in months. And want to say goodbye to you as a super kind gesture that you seem to have appreciated because it was kind. He's a nice guy. Sarah might have appreciated it, but will your new girlfriend appreciate you going to see your ex-girlfriend to say bye in a friendly manner? Question actually, Jonah Hill, is it okay for your wife to visit ex-boyfriends or text them? That's a no. I'm sorry if it's upsetting that I would move on at all six months later, but I have handled you. And with the utmost love and respect, Thanks. Don't ruin all the kindness. You're better than that. Oh God, not, not the you're better than that. Okay, add another check mark to manipulative. Don't flip this. You said being friends with the opposite sex is inappropriate and here you are buddy buddy with your ex very young girlfriend behind the new serious girlfriend's back. So then Sarah responds with screenshots showing that he sexted her two months ago, circled it so he doesn't get confused, showing that the time frame of when he was, you know, with that other woman, that he was still sexing her and he confirms it. And it's very comical when people get caught, they try to switch everything up on you. Look at this, screenshotting intimate text between us is a huge trigger. Jonah, you're caught in a lie. It's giving a woman goes through her boyfriend's phone and sees he's been cheating and then brings it up and shows them and the man says, you went through my phone? I can't trust you anymore. New side of you, Sarah. I care about you and will always be your friend as I have been. Yes, we sexed two months ago. So is that something you would be okay with your new girlfriend doing? That's also a no. And also this just shows um, because I am i don't sext my friend. That's not something that most people who are, like, that's not what friends do, right? Do you guys sext your friends? Apparently Jonah does sext his friends. You know, he was there for her uh, as a friendship as and, and still sexting her. That's what, I don't know, it's Hollywood. I'm not in this circle. But in Jonah's head, sexting friends is completely normal, which makes me, realize why he was so insecure in the relationship. She can't have guy friends because in Jonah's head, all those guys are going to sext her or cheat like Rita allegedly did on Rob Kardashian with Jonah. And then if she hangs out, well, who knows what they're gonna do? They're gonna, they're gonna do it. Why else would Beyonce make that song? So that really shows why he was so insecure with her just even talking to other guys. Why he doesn't want her on social media and why he doesn't want those guys, you know, saying comments. Why he, does, why he doesn't want her to wear a bathing suit because they all, every guy acts like Jonah. Every guy sexed, sex Sarah. It's all making sense, Jonah. Okay, so this is like my longest video and I'm gonna start summarizing all of these texts because there's a lot. I will leave the link to all of this below. You can read all of them if that's what you wanna do. If you don't believe me, it is like a, uh, not a paraphrased version. It's just all the text in a document. But if you go to Google, you can find all of these. I've seen every single one. Okay, so the next text had all the Jonah stars, the perfect man, and he's just a good guy trying to be Good. Well, the next text proved to everyone who was on Jonah Hill's stand or Jonah Hill's side that Sarah is just a salty bitch and she was actually just really jealous of the new good woman. And she definitely got a lot more aggressive. She got mad. You have been kind and supportive and also in need of my support. And that's been confusing to me as to where we stand. This is why I use the word gaslight. I'm not saying it's intentional. I am feeling really fucking shocked and confused right now. Wondering how soon before you met me, were you still talking to Gianna? Gianna is his ex fiance. Five months ago, we were in escrow here. You wanted to put a ring on my finger and put a baby in me. ASAP. And we've kept in pretty close communication since then. Have y'all ever been in a situation when you're talking to someone, like flirting? Texting is thick. You might even be like kissing them and stuff like that, right? Very, very inappropriate texting. Very juicy, thick things. And then bam, they're like getting married. And then bam, they're having a baby too. And you're like, wait, wait a minute. Uh, is your fiance okay with you doing this? Because when we were in a relationship, you were definitely not okay with me to even talk to surfer guys in a public ocean. I have a boyfriend! But this text was the gotcha moment in many videos that were for Jonah. Like this was the proof that everyone needed that she was lying. To me, it just sounds like she's 
confused, pretty pissed off. Salty. Yes, I'll give you that one. I would be very salty too, okay? Sodium would be high and blood pressure would be at its limit. Sad to hear you feel used by me. I feel used by you too. I feel like an idiot for believing that the future we were planning was real and for adjusting my life in ways that accommodated your insecurities and jealousy and codependent, anxious, avoidant attachment style, which left me in a less financially independent and less mentally well positioned than I would have been if I had never met you. This part was also another gotcha moment for many like alpha male spaces, not even alpha male spaces, just, you know, men resonate with this a lot. So it's obviously a lot of men are going to be on his side, but they were saying, see, he was financially, uh, he was providing financially stability for her. This is why she, she's so upset. This is why she's exposing him. He's taking away the money. Here's the thing though. You saw the text of where he was saying, I don't really want you to model. Uh, not really. I don't want you to model. Stop modeling. Don't hang out with these people. Don't wear a, a bikini for your job. I know many of you will say she doesn't have to wear that. Okay, sex sells. We know this. I mean, she needs to make money while she gets that law degree. Prancing around in a bikini on social media will attract way more sponsors than a frumpy, dumpy wetsuit. He didn't come out and say, don't surf, but it seems like he was kind of hinting, hey, don't do these types of things because it makes me feel uncomfortable. And my therapist says that we need to feel comfortable in relationships. And I'm being vulnerable to you right now. So, you know, you're triggering me. And this is what being in a relationship is all about. You're my safe space. Anyway, it seemed that he was redu trying to reduce her income and probably said, because he is a very wealthy man, hey, don't worry, I'm a Hollywood actor, producer, writer, documentary filmmaker, and I am the Hal Stewart. I got you, I'll pay for you, I'll pay for your schooling, as long as you do the things that I want you to do. Like not model, not surfing, I'll take care of you, cause I'm a man. Like I said, I'm speculating, but all of you are doing it too, and in the text she says that she kinda morphed her life to make him feel more comfortable because he has crippling anxiety, and he made financial promises. Many women will do this. And we saw in that alpha male video, a lot of men are supposed to provide, the women do not. They just do what they do. They do what the man tells them to do. And that, and to me that, you know, the best boyfriend ever seems that he just wanted her to do what he wanted her to do. You've been leaning on me for support with your own personal stuff that has nothing to do with me as very recently. Stuff that doesn't really make sense to share with an ex you're trying to detach from so you can be ready to meet someone new. I don't know if he was just trying to be the nice guy that he says he is, but I don't understand why he was still trying to be friends with her. Once again, trying to be friends while flirting and sexting her at the same time, that's confusing. Like people that are on Jonah's side, wouldn't you be kind of confused if someone was still texting you, like confiding in you with some very emotional deep family stuff, sexting you. Wouldn't you be confused if they all of a sudden started seeing someone and they were like, hey, bye. Give that ex the respect of a little time of clarity before you move on. I'm not trying to victimize myself. I mean, isn't she kind of the victim? She did claim, you know, emotional abuse. He is the abuser, she is the victim. I am just a person with feelings. I always felt like I had to be the emotional rock in our relationship, and now that we're not together, I get to be a full human with a full spectrum of emotions again. It's liberating. I think you're doing a lot of projecting with these texts right now. Gotta go. Need to finish this case brief before work. Can talk at noon Hawaii time. Cool, I think that's for the best. I don't want to be confided in if you're dating other people. As for the finances, I'll get off all that shit ASAP, including my therapist. After the financial promises you made to me and the work opportunities I turned down for you, it's been a lot of readjustment. I appreciated your patience and never wanted you to feel used. That's why I've kept in communication with you about it. Maybe next time, try actually saying how you feel instead of people pleasing when you, when you don't actually want it and leaving other people confused. I'm still a little confused at how this was the gotcha moment. She just literally said that he made financial promises. She's gonna get off all the finance shit as soon as possible. I don't understand how some of these men will request that you stop working or stop working as much and then you know because of their request and they will make these financial promises and then once you guys break up we'll take marriage in consideration here because of people will get married they want a woman with traditional values that means no working no nothing you stay at home you don't have any type of income because your husband's supposed to do that and then once the, the a divorce happens all of a sudden it's my money and then a bunch of men will be saying she's trying to take all the money away well yeah she worked at home 
all these years because you asked her to. So with the power of divorce, which you should keep in mind if you want to get married, you can take whatever the judge gives her. So basically Sarah was just irritated after the tabloids took picture of Jonah with the new woman. And since Jonah is a pretty private person, no one knew that Sarah and Jonah broke up and the article got it wrong, mistook the new woman for Sarah. So she's shocked and pissed because like the text confirmed, Jonah was sexting her about two months ago and him and new woman have been chatting it up for a while, so much so that they are now getting married. So she texts him and says, hey, can you tell people that's not me? I want to start working again because you know, you told me not to and I just, well, I gotta start working and I don't want to continue being Jonah Hill's girlfriend. And Jonah says, yes, totally understandable. And then she gets into it. Bruh, you can't have two therapist chick dating situations at once. Like if you want to give yourself to that woman, if you want to be present in dating someone, as you fucking should, you need to detach from me first and do me the fucking respect of allowing me the time to do the same before I see that shit. And yeah, it's not my business how you're gonna emotionally cope with all that, but like out of respect for me, fuck. Give me that clarity and space or like give me a couple weeks at least. I don't fucking know. More than just like boom. And to that, honestly, I say, you know, too bad. Sarah, you can't control how fast somebody gets into a relationship and then posts it on their Instagram. I personally, if I get out of a relationship and I meet someone and I want to post it, I'll post it when I want. I don't have any responsibility to them. But I also feel like she was probably feeling some type of way because it seemed that she had to like tiptoe around a lot when it comes to Jonah and protect his feelings at all costs and she she just kind of wants someone to kind of protect her feelings maybe. But Jonah comes back and says, I totally understand. I It's not my fault that the paparazzi saw me and then decided to post it and I will make sure that they know that that's not you. Uh, the paparazzi has ruined my life ever since I was young. But at the same time, he was still sexting her. So in the last text, Jonah definitely had a different vibe to him. He was very understanding and Sarah felt more of the hostile one, but also it kind of makes sense because he was still flirting with her. Good luck to you in your speed search for a wifey. HMU when you, Sarah, Sarah, what is this? <laughs> Hit me up. Hit me up when you can be a real homie, not a baby boy gameplay, conscious or not. Thank you for sharing. I will take that in. <laughs> She's not done. You trying to choose which chick to text, thinking your most recent ex, me, is a reasonable option because you've been keeping me on the line while getting serious with someone new. I mean, wouldn't you be kind of upset too if he was kind of keeping you in the back burner, saying things, sexting you, I don't know, you sending, you sending the eggplant over, you know, like sexting and shit like that. I don't know what, what you guys are doing, like flirting, doing those things, wouldn't you be upset? Woo! Okay, well that concludes the infamous text messages between Jonah and Sarah. And this video is long as hell and it's about to get even longer because you know when one person talks about a guy or someone or anyone, more individuals tend to speak out and someone did. Zoe 101, the show we all hate it, right? Or is it just me? I really tried to like it because I was all about Britney Spears in that time and her sister was on it, but I just absolutely hated it. You could. What would you do to help the hungry children of the world? Meatloaf, I'd give them all meatloaf. Next. But that doesn't matter. That's not on topic. Just wanted to share my thoughts on the show. Anyway, Alexa Nicholas, who played Nicole on Zoe 101, came out with some very serious allegations toward Jonah. Now, I want to go into this topic just saying in the beginning that I am completely aware that there has been times where women just completely lie. We learned that with the Johnny Depp case. After the Johnny Depp case, more people were open to the, to the thought that women could lie about this. With that being said though, this is part of the story. Alexa is no stranger when it comes to calling out individuals or corporations on their involvement with child abuse. She constantly speaks out against Nickelodeon and how they protected Dan Schneider, a grown man who allegedly sexually exploited the underage girls on the children's network. Um, not one viewer ever had a concern. <laughs> Have you spoken to every viewer? First of all, I'm pretty sure there's like 10 million kids that watch Zoe 101. I really, really doubt that you spoke to every single one of them and found out that no viewer, first of all, also, if you literally search your name, Dan, all of YouTube has concern about all of your content. Actually, when you search your name, there's nothing but concern. She started a movement called Eat Predators, where they strive to bring awareness and an end to the pervasive cover-up of sexual and predatory behavior within the music and entertainment industry. Hi, I'm Alexa Nicholas, and we are Eat Predators. We are resolute protectors of survivors of 
worked in the music industry. Shortly after Jonah Hill's ex-girlfriend accused him of emotional abuse over the weekend, former child actor and Zoe 101 star Alexa Nicholas accused Hill of assaulting her years ago in a series of tweets. Nicholas alleged Hill forced himself on her at a party hosted by one of his friends, actor Justin Long, when she was only 16. According to the AV Club and Nicholas's current age, the party must have taken place around 2008. Hill would have been 24 at the time. So here's the tweet. I just gotta say, when I was 16, I got invited to a house party at Long's house where he was living with some lame predator called actor from CSI Miami. So she was referring to someone called Jonathan Togo. Nicholas claims Togo was sleeping with a friend who was a minor that was also 16 or 17 at the time. Nicholas alleged that the adult men at the party knew she and her friends were minors and that they were all pretty wasted because of course the predator were feeding us minors a bunch of alcohol. She noticed Hill seemed to have his eyes on me and then approached her, instructing her to follow him to his car outside for a cigarette. They were all aware I was 16. After going to Hill's car with him, Nicholas said he never offered her that cigarette he promised and alleged that as we walked back to the door, I asked him for it and he said nothing but, but slammed me to the door and shoved his tongue down my throat. So after all of these allegations came out about Jonah, he then hired Martin Singer, a Hollywood lawyer who also represented Bill Cosby, which is not winning Jonah Hill's feminist audience at all. But according to his lawyer, he says that the accusations is a complete fabrication. Ugh, let's hop back into Sarah and and why she threw out or why she just decided to like throw this case into the abyss of the world. So while Jonah is prancing around saying he's a feminist against toxic masculinity and bro culture, he was sitting those sex to Sarah while also making a documentary about mental health. And mama's got Netflix, so I watched it. I took time out of my day where I usually watch Disney adults parade around Disneyland showing me the food that I plan on eating once I get there, my lighthearted, fun-loving cartoon and multiple Disney movies to watch Jonah Hill's very long documentary where he sits in a room with his therapist and talks very slowly for an hour and a half. You guys, my ADHD brain wanted to die, but I did it. <sighs> all for you. Can I please just get a subscribe for that because it was really rough. It was hard and that is not a sexual reference, Jonah, because I know you like to sexualize everything, but it was a hard watch for someone like me. So if you could touch the subscribe button, that would be awesome. Many people who are critiquing and commenting on the Jonah Hill versus Sarah Brady were saying he was using something called therapy speak. Therapy speak is a term used for the language previously reserved for the therapy room that has now seeped into our everyday lives, talking about setting helping boundaries, joking about coping mechanisms, calling out toxic trauma dumping behaviors are all examples of ways therapy related terms have made it into the mainstream. As we discussed in the beginning of this very, very long video, the words like abuse, gaslight, narcissistic, trauma, et cetera, et cetera, they are loose, they are used so loosely now, they don't have meaning to me anymore. It's very similar to when someone calls someone racist, homophobic, fatphobic, transphobic, a Karen. And my favorite word that is super overused when someone doesn't agree with you is woke, which I personally believe that a lot of the men that are on Jonah's side are scared of saying anything against Jonah. Like he seemed like an insecure man. Like he seemed like he wanted to control her because he thought he was gonna lose her to a very hot young surfer with washboard abs. If you say anything like that, you are going to be called the worst thing ever, woke. And we can't have that. People are all always using these buzzwords to create more of an emotional reaction from other people when someone says something that they don't like. Personally, in my opinion, I think Jonah and Sarah were using what they call now therapy speak. And with the rise of social media, along with the more engagement users receive when using such words, increasing the usage of them when it's not accurate, which thus hurts the individuals that are actually being abused or attacked in certain ways. And though many YouTube therapists have different opinions on the matter, what they did agree on was the fact that these words are being misused. But many people are saying that Jonah is using a lot of what he's learning in therapy to be able to manipulate Sarah. And people were also questioning what type of therapist would speak publicly about their client. It, I guess it's some type of therapist code, you know, the therapy code of honor to not talk about their client, especially in a documentary. I guess the whole like ethical thing comes into some people that it's not the most ethical thing to do, but it was Jonah's idea. And then people started critiquing the therapist as well because in the documentary, he acts as if he created this just mind blowing technique to get whatever you want in life and live life to the fullest. I mean, yeah, the thumbnail is him like, 
you're gonna you're just gonna get it. All you have to do is do what the fuck I tell you. Do exactly what I tell you. I guarantee you'll feel better. Guarantee 100% it's on me. And people are flipping their shit. Because what type of therapist does this? Jonah, huh? What type? You don't have an answer. But something I noticed that a lot of the people that were upset about the documentary didn't even watch it. They said, I'll never watch it. They couldn't even fathom watching it. Well, I did tell you that my nickname is The Nose. Only my boyfriend tells me that because he knows how nosy I am. So you know. My ass watched it and I have to say it wasn't as bad as people are saying, but it was extremely boring. So in the beginning of the documentary, we are in a real session with Jonah Hill and his therapist, Phil Stutz. It takes place in Dr. Stutz's office and he takes us through his life-changing therapy. As I watched the video, I understood what other therapists were talking about. They said that this is absolutely like new not a new practice at all. So that the long and short of it was that the form of therapy that this Dr. Stutz was using is not unique to Dr. Stutz. The documentary was, and I think the, the clinician was basically saying that he invented this kind of therapy. And I'm here to tell you that there was nothing about what he did, aside from some of the specifics in terms of his language, but the overarching style of therapy, as far as I can tell, has been around for decades. There are so many therapists that were like this therapist. And really, I was upset because if you watch the, doc the documentary, you might see this therapist and say, oh, he actually looks like the kind of therapist I would want to work with. But the premise of the documentary is that he's one of a kind and no one else is even close to being like him. And that might turn off people from going to therapy because they're like, well, I'm never going to be able to get in with that guy. And they don't know that there are plenty of therapists in their community who are actually very similar to him. The Dr. Stolz talks about the importance of diet and exercise. The most classic thing is they're not exercising. Diet is another one, and sleeping. How important friendships and community is, and of course, a relationship with yourself. And he does all of this with a cute little uh, pyramid image so that his clients can like have a visual example. To be passionate about connecting to your own life force, and that anybody can do that. And so if you do everything in that life force pyramid, everything will fall into place. So he did have many other methods, but I don't think that I need to take you through every single one. They're not very important. If you really need to see them, it's, it's on Netflix. But it didn't seem very new. He, he pretty much just took a method and slapped a name on it and then it excited people. So in this hour and a half documentary that's supposed to just help everyone, they chatted a lot. Where in Manhattan did you move? The first place was 78th and Broadway, 215 West 78th Street. I thought this was a Jonas session, but apparently it wasn't. It was all a sham. This documentary wasn't taken in one day, as Jonas said it was. This wasn't even a session. So about 26 minutes into the documentary, Jonas says, I am tired of lying to people, lying to you, lying to the world. It doesn't feel fair. And so hmm. if the choice is to be fair and honest, then I should acknowledge that like, We've been shooting for two years. He rips off his wig. I'm literally wearing a wig right now and I literally have like a shaved head. The office shows that they're actually in a green screen area. We're on a green screen, we're not in your office. And he reveals to the audience that this documentary that takes place in one room with one guy took about a year to make. I don't know, it just feels weird and false. It still feels weird and false, but that was the big reveal. That's it. Not done in one day, done in about a year and multiple sessions. And the reveal was that it wasn't a session between him and therapist. It was a session about his therapist. And he wanted to do this because he wanted to share his very special methods because it will help the world. I'm making this movie because I want to give therapy and the tools I've learned in therapy to as many people as possible through a film. I did think it was funny because after he revealed that, uh, revealed this to the therapist, who definitely was not in on this, I mean, he didn't even know they were filming. Cut. <laughs> oh, you guys were filming? <laughs> well, we know who the actor and who the therapist is, huh? Right? <laughs> there were multiple camera angles that moved before they revealed that, but uh, that's fine, I guess. <laughs> But anyway, after the reveal, the therapist puts on his wig and things start getting real. This is my real hair, by the way. <laughs> so like I said, I don't need to go into every single method the doctor talked about, but one that really interested me was something that the doctor said, defining the shadow in your life. Pretty much something that haunts you and Jonah's shadow was him as a 14 year old boy with acne and obese. To me, it's uh, 
a 14-year-old boy who's very overweight and has acne and feels very undesirable to the world. He even broke out a cardboard cutout of obese 14-year-old Jonah. But the work is like inching towards not only accepting, but like bringing this per that th it's great to be this person. Yes. But that's still very hard. Yeah, it'll be hard for the rest of your life. And that version of, of him haunts him. Like, that's his shadow because that's what haunts him because that version of him, he never loved him. He thought something was wrong with him. And a lot of the segment talked about Jonah just being extremely insecure and growing up overweight. Having grown up overweight, it intensely fucked me up. The second method I want to talk about is when they moved on to a method called the perfect snapshot. According to Stoltz, you are trying to always create this perfect life because you think that will bring you the ultimate happiness. A hot body, the perfect wife, the 2.5 kids, and the white picket fence. Then you take the picture with your family in front of your 3.5 bedroom farmhouse design house and post it online for the world to see and think, wow, this is the perfect life. I'm, I made it. I did it. But for some reason, still very unhappy. Happy. And then the therapist reveals happiness doesn't exist, you sad fucks. Wallow in your depression and deal with it. Just kidding, that's not what he says. But basically he says we're always chasing perfection because we think that perfection is going to make us happy. And Jonah says years ago before he met him, he was an extremely insecure person and throughout his whole life he thought that if he just worked hard, lost weight, got successful, gained the perfect life, it would cure him. But it didn't. Before I met you, I'm this like wildly insecure kid and then uh, I think success and awards will absolve me of the pain of life. So I worked so hard to get to that snapshot mm -hmm. and because of my privilege and luck, I got to go into that snapshot relatively mm. early. And when it didn't cure any of that stuff, it made me beyond depressed. Yes. So the point of me like bringing all of this up is that many people on the internet were saying he's not insecure. This is what a man does. Finally, a man who's not scared and insecure. Finally, a man who sets boundaries and not be afraid to lose his girl over his beliefs. Finally, a real man is out there in Hollywood. Drop this attention seeking whore. He's setting boundaries like a man. Like I said in the beginning, you can call it whatever you want. I'm not here to debate whether it's controlling, boundaries. Everyone has certain definitions or words they like to use for certain things and how they relate to it. But I think it's very interesting that in the documentary, he says right here that he was extremely insecure for years of his, like extremely insecure, he's getting better as it goes. And in the documentary, he says that he is still working on it. And the therapist says that you will absolutely never cure yourself of those insecurities. You're going to have to live with it for the rest of your life. And Jonah reveals that he still feels sometimes like the 14 year old fat kid that's like he still feels like his old shadow. And once again, it makes it reiterate why he was so insecure being with a very attractive, fit looking model. That insecurity stays with you forever. And if you never dealt with uh, one anxiety, because you want to try to control everything. Two, you never had an issue with like your weight and just like hating your body. You probably will never understand because even if you get the body that you really wanted or that you always wanted and you think it's going to bring you happiness, it never does. And you still always feel like your past self. So I totally relate on that, but also I feel like people need to, I do feel like he was projecting things onto Sarah when he should have dealt with it. And it was very interesting to see him in this therapy space because he felt very level-headed. He felt like he could really, you know, like communicate his thoughts. They even had his mom on there. So it was like two guys and the mom came in for a little bit. He communicated with the mom about how she kind of fucked him up with talking about his weight and trying to put him on diets and bringing him into a nutritionist and everything and making him think that something's wrong with him. And he, that just stayed with him forever. And he made sure to tell her, I'm not trying to attack you. I'm just both Realizing, you know, what this all did to me. They had a very good conversation. But then looking back at those texts, it did feel very demanding. It didn't feel like a conversation. That's the way that I took it. Some people feel like he was being a very nice guy. To me, not so much. I don't think nice guys say cut this shit and tell her that she needs to stop working and being a model. But we all have definitions of what a nice guy is. I've always been the nice guy of the group. Okay. Now the documentary ends with Dr. Saltz doing some push-ups to help his Parkinson's disease. Dr. Saltz asks Jonah what he's grateful for. I'm grateful for my nephews. I'm grateful for surfing. I'm grateful for my dog. I'm grateful for you. This part was exceptionally funny to me because apparently, according to Sarah, they were together during this time. And she even helped him out with the film. 
and he thanked his dog. The doctor lays on the bed and daydreams for a bit. I see an ocean. And then they express their complete and dire love for each other. I feel closer to you now than when we started. I love you. I love you. And I love you, Jonah, for giving me so much content. And that was it. I'm not sure why people were freaking out about this. It. It was rather boring. Nothing really happened, nothing new, nothing that was like mind blowing. Did he want to help people? I don't know. Is mental health something that uh, you can bank on right now? It's very popular. Uh, yeah. But once again, we can speculate. I don't know Jonah's intentions with that one. Boundaries, not boundaries, controlling, not controlling. When I ended my study, my research, my internet research on this, what I ended is I still am confused as to if a model was the bottom of the barrel of what he could date. Why the fuck did he choose a model? So I think the lesson that we all learned today is if you want to be friends with someone and them not take it as you are trying to them. Maybe don't sext them. There's that. Anyway, you know what I think they all just need to do is just talk it all out. Sarah, Jonah, the therapist, you know, lay on the bed, daydream a little bit. I see an ocean. And talk about it. Ooh, throw in the new wife in there too. And film it. Document it. That'll really throw the internet for a loop. Anyway, now a word from our sponsor, me. A donut. No, it'll go straight to your thighs and then you'll blow up. Sorry, it's just a SpongeBob. Anyway, don't eat that. It's unhealthy and you'll ruin your body. All bodies are good bodies. We can just move on from this. Yeah, I think that's for the best. It's a protein donut, low in sugar. It's all the rage in Barbie land. Man, I wish we had that in reality land, but you do. <laughs> Proto, a low sugar protein treat. Enjoyed in Barbie land and a reality land. Proto, a small business ran by me. Get yours today by clicking the link below and thank you so much for supporting this channel. Well, thank you guys so much for staying with me. If you stayed till the end of the video, my God, you guys, you deserve one of those. And if you did, leave me a comment saying, I will beat both of you off at the same time. But on that note, I will see all of you guys next time. Wake up, honey, I made you breakfast. Fresh coffee and bagels too. A new day is waiting for us. We got lots of fun stuff to do. Let's go to the zoo and feed the monkeys. I can lend them your baseball cap. Let's make the day a very lot of fun. Growing up is just a trap.